Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome to Milfle, the home of the first mayor of Port of Spain, one of the magnificent seven. Uh, and welcome to Pantheon, uh, an exhibition on the history of the king and queen costumes of Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. It's an extraordinary, magical thing that um, created. So, you know, there are not many people on the planet that do large-scale human costume. It's something, it's a province of a very small, select few sets of tribes who are interested in the excessive. You know, most people who create giant costumes, they create like floats. You know, there's huge structures like sculptures that they drag along. You'd see them being drawn by oxen and tractors and trucks and cars and even when there's a human being toting them, most of them are static sculptures that they drag along, along back towards their back. Somewhere about a hundred years ago, the Trinbegonians in their wisdom, when confronted with the decision that we're going this way, made the decision, you know, we're going to do this thing, but if we do this thing, they have to dance. And you can hear the conversation, fellas, we're doing it, you know, we're going up big. We're going big, we're going to do this thing, but you know, it had to move. When I move one thing, it had to move with me. I have to see thing moving and thing, you know, it had to move. You know, because I ain't dragging no big dead body behind my back, like, you know, like, you know, you can hear the conversation, it shouldn't be good in the conversation. That simple decision to make it dance. With that, we diverted away from the rest of the world, and we went on this slowly, journey all by ourselves. In the intervening 100 years came literally hundreds of innovations in materials, in engineering, and all of that. To arrive at a place right now where the Trinbegonian science exists, that a human, on a human body, on an unadorned human body, somebody could throw something up on them 40 feet by 40 feet, sans wheels, and dance it. Nobody else could do that. Despite MIT, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, Columbia, wherever. Simply because one, we pursued that single line of inquiry all the way to its eventual destination, to emancipate movement from all other structures on the ground and take it off the human body and extend the kineticism of the human body and human spirit upwards and outwards. Emotion, everything from all different parts of the body. It's also possible that the reason why we've been able to do that is well because we could dance, right? And some people probably find it a little more difficult to dance than others. I mean, I kicks in, but at the same time, it's a serious thing. Barry McBurney, Pearl Primus, Dialia, the mother of Caribbean dance, the mother of black dance in America, and the mother of modern Chinese dance. These are all Trinbegonian women born in the same decade. Between these three women, they transform movement on planet Earth, on both sides of the hemisphere. I'm gonna say that again. Between these three women, they transform movement on planet Earth. Because they're Trinbegonian, of course, they, are, they have no heritage site, they are no monument, they are no statue. They didn't have a line in a textbook saying any of these things. Despite that, they did what they did. A couple years later, we democratized limbo for the entire planet and gave the entire planet the limbo. And right now, we are giving the entire planet whining. The whole planet is whining with Trinidad. They call it a token. And they call it whining with an H, which aggravates <laughs> the fear, like, you know, uh, a lot of, you know. And it's been ascribed to all kinds of people. Some people say the Jamaicans. They're saying that it's strip clubs. We know, we think that is responsible for that. It's 300 Trinidad carnivals that are all over the planet. And all the hardware and software that goes along with that. There's one Venice Carnival. There is one Brazil Carnival. There is one New Orleans Carnival. 
there are 300 plus Trinidad style carnivals all over the planet. The two largest festivals in the Western world are Trinidad style carnivals London, Northern Hill, Brooklyn, Labor Day. At their height, 4 million people on the streets. These are fortress economies. You can't get in there to sell a fountain pen. We have smuggled a four million people festival into the middle of that. If three black people get together at any one of those metropoles, it's cause for police action. Like, all right, we have three on the corner of the corner. <laughs> we have four million people moving and they have to negotiate with it. That is the power of the Trinbagonian person and personality and Caribbean sensibility. And of course we know no public sector or private sector did that. No corporation or politician had any hand in any of that export. The most successful Trinbagonian export worth $15 billion every single year. That festival to this country is worth $1.3 billion. There are big corporations here that earn 85, 65% of their profits for the year during that period, October to March. Of course, the midwife of that carnival is for the state right across there behind the bridge. They don't receive anything from that export of that IP. People who midwife the Trinity, Holy Trinity of Pan, Mass, and Calypso. The communities that bred those things. Or oh, we talk about reparations and all that kind of stuff. That's reparations that needs to be paid. So, you know, the reason why we did this exhibition, you know, upon, you know, yes, yeah, this glorious thing, the kings and queens are these incredible monsters, you know, beautiful creatures. But, you know, all the different traditions have their place in conversation and debate. You hear people talking about traditional mass versus the bikini and beads, soca versus calypso. All the hell, everybody have a place. Nobody talks about the king and queens. You ever realize that? Nobody talks about the king and queens. It is the largest thing that we do other than buildings. 40 by 40 feet in their hundreds every single year. It is the sum of our creative, imaginative, and engineering arts, all locked and loaded into one artifact. From the latest kind of innovations and in materials and stuff, to ancient artisan crafts from three different continents and subcontinents, all loaded into one artifact. We are talking about why. So in our rumination, we think like, you know, Trinidadians avoid, avoid responsibility like the plague. You know, Lloyd Best has a term when he talks about Trinidadians. Not to be with it's Trinidadians. I'm not indicted to be with this. He says that Trinidadians are unresponsible. We're not irresponsible, eh? We're unresponsible. That means we the outside even the concept of responsibility. We don't even have the idea that what was that? And I feel that of all the traditions and all the artifacts and all the things that we do, the kings and queens come loaded with responsibility. Civilizational responsibility. That you can't avoid from the time you contemplate that. On these walls, you're going to see images of hundreds of the greatest king and queen costumes of all time. All but two of them have been destroyed. So every single costume that you see on these walls here, all the ones that those who are Trin Trinidadian have the memories, oh, you remember this one, ding, 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 gone, destroyed. The only two left are Tantan and Saga Boy and the skeleton of Mad Crab. Mitchell, inside Mitchell's factory. Everything else, every Barclay, every Bailey, every single body, gone, destroyed. Now, we did not come on this island and encounter these artifacts like ruins and pyramids and stuff. We didn't come and say, like, wee boy, check out these things these people used to do now, boy. These things are, it's a pity we just only make small houses like this because if, if, we, if, we, if we had no idea what I built, we are the ones building these things. 
We are the ones building things 40 foot by 40 foot. So therefore, we have to build the houses to accommodate them. We have to build the temples to consecrate them. We have to build the cathedrals. That's nobody else's responsibility. That is our responsibility. We have to institutionalize the skills. We have to document them and transmit them generation to generation. Nobody else is doing that. You don't make a child and leave it outside in the rain and then go partying and stuff and then come back. Yo, anybody see a child? A child? A small child, man. I just left the child here about that yesterday. You don't do that. We are making these things. And these things come with a responsibility. Civilization is a conscious act. Right? Civilization is a conscious act. It is not the things that you do. Civilization is the things that you do with the things that you do. Say that again. Civilization is not the things that you do. It is the things that you do with the things that you do. After you've done the thing, you sit down and you contemplate and you say, I want to keep on doing this thing. Or, that was an error. I'm making sure that I never repeat that again. And you build all the places of memory and you put them on either on a shrine or you put it in a prison. Or you make sure that it's there and it's available for contemplation and it's there feeding you all the time. But we continue to start again and again every single year. Everything we do. The carnival is just one part of it. The kings and queens is just one part of that neuroses. We have to do better. We have to create institutions of memory to transmit the things that we have done of genius. And with the warnings for the things that we have done that are crap. So that we don't repeat them. Here's we win a gold medal. So now we feel everybody who run it. Yeah, in a gold medal. What wrong with them men, boy? Them men can't have the kind qualify final self, boy. They, but, 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 but here's the go. You, you invest in any trap program. You build any trap. You invest in coaches. All the old trap clubs and stuff. You resource them in any way, form, or fashion. They have homes? No. But you want the gold. Right? And you want all that genius to persist. It don't work like that. Let's move. I'm going to tell you three other things and then I'm going to leave you the wilds on your phone to find things there. But I'm going to tell you two, three important things.